Welcome to my review of the 2023 TV show, True Lies. Right now, there is only one season. It does not look like there will be more than one season. If, hypothetically, in the future they do make additional seasons, I will make at least one more video talking about the, the, yeah, the seasons after season one. Now, I'm going to start by telling you this was a show that I loved a lot of the time. I didn't, th you know, it's not perfect. Uh, let's see, this video will have some jokes and we'll get into some serious topics. Now, if you're looking for a review that talks about, oh, the show is different from the movie, so it sucks, whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. And this is also not the place to go if you're just looking for a man baby crying misogynistically about how, you know, there are capable women on this show. That is that is one hundred percent not what this video is gonna be. Those people are terrible. So I realize this video is long. I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. This video is a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with spoiler, so you can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. I will not warn for spoilers for the movie itself. If you want my, you know, the movie itself does not spoil anything about this show. If you want my spoiler thoughts on episodes, the link to them will be in the description box. You know, there's enough differences between the two properties. So, this has a TV PG rating, and so will this video. I will restrain myself from language that exceeds that. And yeah, they do a pretty good job. Uh, you know, there are a couple of things that will go over the kids' heads for the adults uh, watching, but it doesn't like get really violent or there you know there's not a lot of profanity sexuality is always just like implied i'm not sure they even say the word sex like there's one t there's at least one point where they just say love making instead so you know yeah now and and i do think it makes a lot of sense to go for such a you know, a, a show that you can watch pretty, you know, almost regardless of, of age. You know, it's not G-rated. But, you know, the, yeah, the movie is R-rated. You know, it's not really, it's not trying to do the exact same thing as the movie. And the movie also doesn't push the R-rating that hard. And, right, and, you know, some, some people say that, you know, stuff that has a very low age rating is just boring. I didn't find that. You know, I, I prefer stuff that has a high age rating. I think it's really important to d discuss, you know, important issues. Some of those you can't do on a, on a low age rating. The show actually does a good job, you know, covering the ones it can. Now, I have watched every episode once each. Uh, you know, I, I realized that, you know, a lot, you know, Americans have watched the entire show before, but here in Denmark, the most, you know, the season one finale only hit Disney Plus earlier today. Now,. Uh, I guess this is a, a fine place to briefly say. So there are 13 episodes making up season one, and the average length, yeah, they're, they're around, you know, 40, 41 to 43 minutes. So, you know, yeah, your, your average length for, for that kind of thing. So... Let's get into the writing. They do a good job giving each character their own unique voice and quirks and such. Some characters definitely are not as interesting as they could be, though. And, yeah, so the, 
the the episode intro, which plays for for episodes, you know, not not the very first one because that's the one that sets up the stuff that's in the episode intro, but most later episodes have the episode intro, which features the standard lean male spy saying he's been a spy for, you know, 17 years, and then something happened, but they also subvert that by having Helen chip in and say she thought they were being truthful, and then realized he's been lying, and he then says it was true, it was true lies. And, yeah, the, the someone working on this show definitely wanted for that title to make sense, rather than just be like, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's memorable because it's nonsensical, other than how it's described and, you know, in, explained in, in this show. And, yeah, uh, good pilot, not, like, the best I've ever seen, but it does a good job setting up the the different... The, the, yeah, the, the characters, the, the sort of status quo, the, the formula that the show follows for the, the rest of season one. And the season one finale is good. Uh, you know, I, I like it a lot, and I do really appreciate it does not end on a cliffhanger. Like, there's, there's a clear lead-in to the next. They, they wanted a season two, clearly. But they resolve everything. By the end of the season one finale, yeah, the the um, it's the kind of ending where, like, yeah, you know, if they made a, a sequel, there, there, a second season, there's definitely stuff to to follow up on. But if they don't, and it looks like they won't, you know, you can you can mentally finish the rest of the story. But like, you know, I love Alias, but boy, did that show love ending seasons on massive cliffhangers. Thankfully, they did manage to resolve, you know, the actual series finale to Alias. They knew that it was the series finale, so they don't end it on a cliffhanger. You know, but yeah, the other seasons all end on cliffhangers. I really appreciate that this does not. And... Yeah, um, I know a lot of people think that this is really inferior to the movie. I really don't think the movie holds up. I, I understand that James Cameron was going through a tough divorce at the time. I wish he t had just gone to proper therapy instead of taking out his frustrations with his wife and, and kids and such by making a movie that's basically screaming from the top of its lungs. All women are awful. Kids are terrible. You know, and and of course, we can't forget, it is also absolutely screaming that the Middle Eastern, you know, Middle Eastern Muslims are terrible. And these are just incredibly harmful ideas. And I, I get how a divorce, you know, divorce brings out the worst in a lot of people. I've seen it with my own eyes. I'm not saying that there's nothing there. I just wish he hadn't made a movie out of that pain when he could have just gone to therapy. There's no reason the movie had to be so hateful. You know, I've, I've, I did an entire video talking about, I'm not going to talk too much about the movie in this video. I'm just briefly going to say, you know, I'm not saying that the Mr. and Mrs. Smith movie is perfect, but I wish that, and I'm not like comparing, I, I get, you know, of course, like the action is going to be better you know, they're made over a decade apart. That's not, you know, but the the tone, the way that it deals with a marriage that the, you know, that it's going through trouble and the husband is this, you know, has this secret where he's like a spy. I feel like that movie did significantly better. It's much less hateful. And aggressive and this show also like this show was not made by people going through a divorce this show was made by people who are like let's never end up let's never get as hateful and angry and bitter as the movie does you know it it includes enough of what's there in the movie but it does its own thing a lot of the way and I really think that's the way to go 
yeah, the, the show is superior to the movie in, uh, let's, yeah, let's get into the direction. So yeah, the show is superior to the movie in all ways, other than as a big bu budget Hollywood blockbuster, which, of course, no competition, where the movie is hateful and bitter, the show actually does mean that the marriage can be strengthened. It approaches it with emotional intelligence instead of misogynistic displays of sexual humiliation and blackmail. There are definitely times where the tone reaches sitcom levels with the way people are behaving and talking, the kinds of misunderstandings there are, and obviously this is going to be off-putting to some people. I think it fits the core, you know, I, I think it fits. The core concept here is right out of a sitcom. Now, because the episodes are largely standalone, you won't be confused if you miss one. There's a couple of exceptions, there's a couple of things that you know, later become, a, a lot of it, like, as long as you pay attention to the, if, if you skip episodes, just pay attention to the, the previously on, and you'll be fine, you know, and I think that is very much intentional, I really don't think they were, I, I think they were worried that they would end up with a show where if you miss one episode, that's it, you're screwed, they really didn't want that, so, yeah. The gender stereotypes are, indeed, very stereotypical. In one episode, Helen reorganizes Harry's stuff, notes that she's more organized than he is, and he struggles to let her help him. But the show does at least have empathy for women, promote open communication as important for healthy long-term relationships. Episodes are about the relationship between the taskers, sometimes also the other... You know, there's also the... Is that a spoiler? There's uh, um, there's also the spy duo who help them out of Luther Tennant and Maria Ruiz, and yeah, the the you know yeah, so so it's stuff about you know them working together as a duo, both in the relationship and as spies, you know, and we'll get into some aspect of that, like communication, support, trust, that kind of thing. And it's also, there are almost no two-parters in this entire season. It's very much like, I don't know if I want to give away. I think I'm just, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. It's almost every single episode is self-contained. One thing about the show, it definitely does that, it, it does that thing of if a female character is supposed to be a potential love interest, but be not a knockout, they'll hire a conventionally attractive actress and dress her down, which takes away roles from actors who are maybe not conventionally attractive, but very talented. And the show features great needle drops. The music always fits, always really, you know, you, you leave the episode really, you know, humming it and, and just, yeah. It is very formulaic. You're probably not going to be surprised very often in this show. It's, you know, I'm just glad, like, I don't watch very much television anymore, and a lot of the tropes are still the same as back when, you know, I guess it was about 10 years ago that I stopped watching TV, and yeah, you know, a lot of the tropes are still the same, but at least, you know, there's been a lot, a lot has happened as far as, like, equality goes. I remember how hateful shows used to be towards anyone not a white man. Let's see. Yeah, and the Taskers do have children, Dana and Jake. I don't remember it, Jake. Seriously, though, Jake basically exists for Dana to talk to so that she isn't monologuing in those scenes. And, like, yeah, occasionally he'll do, you know, he's, he's the younger of the two. So he'll do the annoying younger brother thing. You know, he's, it's that thing of if a, if a, you know, He's, he's a teenager. If a teenage boy thinks that the only way he's going to get attention is negative, you know, doing something that will get negative attention, yeah, he's gonna, you know, so, so sometimes he will say something that Dana really doesn't want him to, either to her or to the parents, and yeah. And I just don't think it's enough to justify having the character there. I honestly, I f it feels like, and I feel bad for, like, the actor... Um, Lucas J, I think he does well with what he's given. Everyone does, you know, yeah, the acting is, is quite good all the way. Yeah, like, 
it feels like someone like maybe maybe there's like a focus testing thing where it's like uh, people respond better to if the family have one daughter and one son so okay I guess we gotta fit him in there somehow let's you know and and nobody really wanted to write the character nobody really had any ideas for how to make him interesting so he's just kind of there and it's just not yeah now some critic quotes a mission of the week series that is nicely put together Gonzaga de deserves her own show uh, let's see yeah th this credit does say it has remarkably little emotional depth early episodes I agree some of the later ones do get deeper but but yeah it definitely like if that's important for you and I get that you know I I most shows I I go for go for emotional depth uh, you know on, honestly like if this had not at all been connected like there's a couple of things it's connected to a James Cameron property who you know true lies is the only movie of his that I don't love it is you know the showrunner is Matt Nix who you know if you think you recognize his name yeah, um, the, the, you know, Burn Notice and the, ah, uh, crap, what, what's it called again? There's also, he did one of the Marvel ones, uh, I'll have it momentarily. <clears throat> Other than Burn Notice, The Gifted, yeah, and he did something called The Good Guys, I have no idea. I, I don't know anything about that. But but yeah, you know, Burn Notice, he did a great job on. I've heard mixed things about uh, Gifted. But yeah, you know, he's he's great for this kind of spy. You know, it should be clear, for sure, Burn Notice is the better show. Uh, you know, but, but yeah, you know, spy couple and you know some emotional issues and like creative solutions for problems that one more so than this one but but yeah it makes a lot of sense that he did this you know yeah let's see and um Right, one, uh, yeah, one critic says, one episode tests the limitations of its true lies manifesto, forces the ensemble to acknowledge the damage their dishonesty has caused their loved ones. Uh, the lack of good writing makes for some corny dialogue, which combined with some obvious spy tropes, low-budget action sequences, just makes it seem like it's trying too hard. Yeah, that's, there's a lot of, of truth to that. Uh, you know, I, I like the action a lot, but it definitely is fairly low budget even if you don't compare it to the movie which you know if, even if you haven't seen it like you know there's you know you you must have been living under a rock to not know James Cameron delivers on action spectacle you know that's just that's that's the thing you know action spectacle amazing special effects and you know concepts that you know maybe it's not it's not always the most original, but the concepts, you know, all of his movies have a concept that at the very least is interesting and explored. Now, let's see, right, another critic, a breezy throwback to a different era. The result is a show that's generally fun, but beyond the value of name recognition, doesn't completely make a case for investing in a series version. The scenes are slick, the action is fast, the outcomes are predictable. Sometimes that's exactly what you want from your weeknight watch. I will briefly say, I do think that it... I'm glad that they got an entire season. I think they do a good job exploring the gender issues that I mentioned earlier. And let's see... Yeah, one one critic says the, the f from the jump, the, you know, the the actual spy missions are bafflingly dull. Yeah, I I disagree. And yeah, one person felt that it's, actually I'll just read the entire quote. I I disagree, but it's 
It's kind of fun. I, I like the way he wrote it. That they wrote it. True Lies has shown us why XX should be less reliant on looking back, exemplifying the sheer maddening pointlessness of doing it just because. And let's see. Right, and and some people really do not like the the pilot feeling. It's too similar to the movie itself. You know, I. I feel like they had to get that out of the way. I think that later episodes do a better job making a case for why it makes sense to make a TV series, you know, not not a new movie, which you know for for decades they talked about, you know, making another one, and and you know you you can understand why, like the the you know yeah the the principal cast are still doing movies uh, the the so so yeah but i think it makes a lot of sense to to turn it into this almost sitcom like show and yeah i think you know g give it a couple of episodes uh, if if you even if you know if the if the pilot feels like it's just doing the movie i kind of agree but I really feel like it had to get that out of the way, and I really, really appreciate that they do get it out of the way so quickly, instead of spending forever. Yeah. You know, through the rest of the season, there's intermittent references to the movie, but uh, yeah. Let's see, and... Uh, right. Replacing the cartoonish Middle Eastern baddies of the movie, this true lies goes through a series of wholly interchangeable nefarious weapons dealers, never really finds any sort of stakes or scale to its action. There's some truth to that. The film's concept has been reduced to a paint-by-number light CBS procedural, if that's the type of programming you enjoy, have at it. Just don't expect anything more. Those who crave their action without the blood will be tempted to give it a try, and they'll be back. CBS is no stranger to adapting previous material for success, but True Lies just falls flat in carving out its own identity. And I'm going to go ahead and guess that they mean, like, as a show. But, and, and that's, th like, I... I am aware that there is an entire genre of these, you know... Yeah, a uh, uh, badass spy who is who has a partner, or at least in love with someone else, who is not necessarily themselves a spy, but like close to it, and this kind. Of, you know, I haven't watched that many of them. I've watched this Burn Notice and Alias, but you know, yeah, I'm I'm aware that there are a bunch of others. I could absolutely imagine that this show you know, for those who have watched the other ones, that this show doesn't really, you know, and, and like, for sure, um, Alias, I already mentioned that Burn Notice is, but Alias is also far better show than, than this overall. And, let's see, right, so one, one critic argued that the show skips over some of the best parts of the true life story. The creative decision to make, uh, let's see, to, yeah, to have Helen realize so early th about the, the spy stuff deprives the viewer of the fun of Helen figuring it out, Harry desperately trying to cover up his missions. I get what they mean, but I completely disagree. I, I really, really appreciate the decision to make, you know, to bring her into it so early. I, I think the most of the best stuff of the show comes from the fact that she's adjusting to knowing that her husband is a spy and the way that yeah the the relationship drama kind of of stuff you know outside of of like we have we have plenty of spy shows where the protagonist is trying to hide that they're a spy from other people you know i honestly i really got my fill of that on alias so i i don't want another spy show to do that I got more than my fill of that on Alias. That's something when, like, when I go back and rewatch, it's like, oh, right, this was back when they were still doing that. So, just, yeah. 
Uh, right, one person says uh, Mr. Howie's rather colorless, but his lack of palette serves his co-star well. Ms. Gonzaga, she her she Hulk attorney at law, is the spark that lights up True Lies. Absolutely, which is a pretty funny show when not trying to dazzle us with car chases, gunfights, and displays of computer graphics that are probably gibberish. I don't know why people f are so down on the computer graphics, like. Would you rather that they just sit you down and explain all this stuff? Like, that's what the computer graphics are there for, so that it can visually very quickly get... Like, I've watched other shows that have, you know, these kind of complex plots, and you'll just have, you know, it'll, it'll go to a character, and, and he'll be like, So... Is is the this that and the other thing is that still happening and and it's just like okay we get it you people you know you just got back from from the the ad break you're worried people will have forgotten you have to reestablish but like it's just it's it gets really really annoying like I love Prison Break but I it's there's there's so much exposition on that show and I'm not saying that they could have done this because it's not a spy show you know here. Like, the, the computer graphics are basically, because they have this spy organization behind them, and it's like, oh, there's a, you know, there's someone at a computer, you know, keeping track of all this stuff, just, yeah. And, right, one, one critic says, CBS True Lies is more, much more in the vein of the network's semi-recent reboots of things like Magnum P.I., MacGyver, and Hawaii 5 a trifle... Yeah, trifle not a blockbuster is, is true. I I haven't watched. I've watched original Magnum PI. I haven't watched the reboot. I don't think I've watched any version of Hawaii Five O. I'm aware of MacGyver. I haven't watched any MacGyver at all. Let's see. Right. Despite their best efforts, Howie Howie and Gonzaga can only do so much with the writing they've been given. The Neutralize is just the latest example of a big-budget movie that has been fed into the machine that is network TV. And... Let's see... This version of True Lies, created by Burn Notice Matt Nix, barrels through what the film brilliantly set up in order to get to what the show will presumably be... Uh, However long it lasts, it brings up the question of why someone thought turning through lies into a TV show was a good idea in the first place. I already explained why I disagree, but there's definitely a number of both critics and user reviewers who agree with them and not me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the the true lies gets better as it concentrates on the chemistry between Howie and Gonzaga. And, yeah, the rest of the show feels like an artifact from another age of network dramas, and not in the fun poker face kind of way. And, uh, let's see, so the... Yeah, and and the the um, I guess that is about it. So let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, one one user reviewer says it fill this show fills the gap left by covert affairs. I I wouldn't I. I wouldn't necessarily mind watching that show. I, I especially, I'm almost 100% certain, I'm going to have it momentarily, Covert Affairs, yeah. I've really, I've always really liked Piper Parabo. Uh, you know, I, I watched her on the, hold on, am I thinking? No, it is. Oh, right, I'm thinking, uh, anyway, yeah. I like her too, though. But yeah, I, you know. So yeah, I I would be happy to watch that as well. Now let's see. Right, one one person points out, you know, the gadgetry is very sci-fi. 
this this one guy says it distracts degrades the ability to get into the story I mean it's the movie itself has stuff that's completely ridiculous I, I really don't I feel like a lot of user reviewers just they don't like that the woman has so much agency and is allowed to be cool and kick ass and you know not just be this really really hateful misogynist stereotype and some of them feel bad about saying that so they just whine about that like a lot of this is just describing the stuff that's in the show and acting like it isn't like I'm not gonna claim that the tone is exactly the same between the book the, the movie and the TV show but the like watch the movie again or better yet don't the movie is silly like very very silly it just like I'll grant that the the show goes more sci-fi than than the movie does but it's really not like just yeah and let's see the Right, yeah, one person points out, I like that the showrunners are not wasting time stretching the story out with multiple lies and cover-ups between husband and wife. Fine for a drama, often feels slow and disruptive when watching an action-adventure series. Let's see... Right, it was also a great choice to start Helen off with a set of skills and throw her into the action early. Absolutely agreed. Let's see... The atmosphere of the pilot episode is a beat five minutes in we get action gadgets. Yes, keep it moving like this, please. And they do. Uh, every episode is fun and uh, just, yeah. And, it, yeah, uh, let's see. This guy also points out, you know, if you love shows like The A-Team, Burn Notice, he also points to Mission Impossible. I've never watched the show. I love the movies. Never watched the show. I'd like to watch the show, though. But, yeah, very true about the A-Team. And, let's see. Right, uh, one person said the constant split-screen directing becomes annoying. I completely disagree. I find it to be very effective. And I say most of the camera work is cheesy with the attempt to have fancy visuals. I think it works. And so even the action scenes are poorly choreographed, have an amateur hour feel to them. I feel they're fun, tense, and cool. You know, he, he makes it nice and easy because he does he just kind of describes, so I just counter with other he's not really making arguments. And let's see. I, I really think like you know, if you if you give this a chance, like keep in mind what the budget is for this kind of thing. Like don't don't expect something that's completely yeah. And the, let's see, yeah, one, one guy just saying a lot of negative things that aren't really, none of this particularly makes sense. Right, and then, then it says, trying to ride the coattails of such an amazing movie is sickening to say the least. What the heck is going on in the entertainment industry these days and how can such garbage even exist? So, yeah, you know, he, he uses terms like disgraceful, shameful, disrespectful, junk, sickening garbage. Yeah, the disgraceful, shameful, disrespectful, junk, sickening garbage is this show, not the hero sexually blackmails and humiliates his wife and it saves their marriage film that it's based on. Yeah, right. And uh, let's see. Yeah, one the person points out the dialogue is very generic. Let's see, right, and and one person says that Helen is bullying. Are we watching the same show? She can be a little pushy, sure, but she doesn't bully anyone. Really sounds like this viewer is bringing their own, pro like, like they can't, this viewer can't see a woman be confident and not feel like they're bullying. And I'm, you know, maybe they were bullied by, you know, a, a girl or a woman that sucks. I would empathize with them if they weren't taking out their, you know, if they weren't choosing to embrace misogyny rather than just acknowledging, yeah, some individual women and girls, not so great. You know, doesn't mean that every, it's, it's completely ridiculous. Like, at no point in the entire first season does she bully anyone. 
let's see. Right, and, and this person says, you know, it's been remade as if it's an inoffensive kids film like Spy Kids or something similar. That's, there's some truth to that. Right, and one guy says, you know, oh, you know, the wife is annoying and nasally. That's her natural voice, you a-hole. And, yeah, another guy says, oh, the wife annoys me so much between her brash, forceful manner. She's charming. You're just afraid of strong women. The show does clearly communicate that you should listen to women, which is why misogynists hate it. And, yeah, one, one, guy, one, one reviewer says, joking through life and death situations are stupid. Uh, you know, the husband and wife were bickering in the middle of a firefight. That kind of thing was in the movie as well. So, they're just, you know, yeah, it's stupid, but it's, you know, it's there in the movie. It's, it's taking that element from the movie. Let's see. Yeah, one, one guy says, at least the actors look like they're having a good time. Agreed. If you try this, just think spoof, like Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, you'll be fine. Exactly. And... At least one person says Kaylee Kuoko should play Helen. Like, I don't... Like, it's not the... the um, Yeah, the, the, um, you know, part of the, the great thing about having Ginger Gonzaga in addition to Al Towns, which is, is that it adds some much need, like, the movie is way too white. You know, every, every person who isn't white is evil, so that's not great. And, well, yeah, the one exception, but he's, like, he's so vanilla that the fact that he isn't white, like, anyway, but the, the, yeah, you know, Ginger Gonzaga adds some flavor to it, and, you know, Kaylee Kuoko is white, I have to admit, I haven't really seen her in anything since Eight Simple Rules, I'd like to, I hear she's great still, so, and she was absolutely great. Right, and one person says they needed Elizabeth Banks in here. She would also have done a great job. That's absolutely true. And let's see. Um, yeah, and this guy says the husband sure acts childish. Yeah, like in the movie. One person says it's very cheesy. That's true. And yeah, some person, some some at least one person doesn't think that Steve Howey works as a spy. I haven't seen him anything else. I thought he did great here. Let's see. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to read this entire thing out loud. I'll just say that, yeah, um, some people feel comfortable rating Ginger Gonzaga's physical attractiveness. I don't think anybody should feel comfortable doing that. And just like, yeah, you know, the 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 kind of misogynist hate hateful reviews of it, like, I don't, you know, to, to the people who write these, I don't know who hurt you, from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry that they stopped hurting you, and, right, one, one person says, oh, the, half the time, Helen is whiny, the other half, she's a shrew, most of the time, she's witty, and only calling out BS, you know, early episodes, sometimes she's a little whiny, not particularly a shrew. Like, she doesn't say or do anything that's unreasonable, considering he's lied to her face for 17 years straight, as long as they've known each other at all. Communication is key to what the show is in part about, healing a marriage. You know, in the movie, it's supposed to... The movie claims that it's about healing a marriage, but there, Harry extorts and sexually humiliates borderline rapes, Helen, and barely has to answer for it at all, 
The fact that it doesn't lead to a divorce where the judge sides entirely with Helen, many years of therapy, stretches credulity far past the breaking point. Honestly, people calling her a sh shrew just don't like when women express confidence and have their own opinions and aren't constantly praising men and worshipping the ground they walk on. And honestly, she says plenty of positive, loving things. It's just not the only thing she said. Like, I really, please, please seek help. If you watch this, and you think that she's a bad person, like, you really have a warped idea of what women are, like, I'm not gonna pretend like there's no media that makes women look awful, but this is not one of those pieces of media, and just the, and it, yeah, like I mentioned, yeah, there are individual women and girls who, you know, say and do really bad things, but just, yeah, it's, it's, and yeah, the, these user review writers don't even point out how messed up what happens in the movie is. They don't acknowledge that this is leaps and bounds better, less hateful, really not hateful much at all. There's a little bit of racism, to be sure, but very, very, like, it's much, much milder than the movie. I'd prefer if there were none, obviously. If you're watching this video right now, and you've watched at least one episode of the show, and you think her character is a shrew, yeah, you're a misogynist, I hope you get therapy, I honestly mean that, I realize some people say, get therapy, they mean it as an insult, but just, yeah. Right, and, and one, this reviewer goes on to say, the kids are just a nightmare, they're sullen, rude, and conniving, what, I have no idea what he's talking, just, there's nothing like that on this show, just, sometimes rude and sullen, but like, it's just, no, it, the, calling them a nightmare, just, yeah, let's see, and, right, and, and, yeah, one, at least one person says, oh, it's hard to imagine the husband as a 17-year spy, 17-year spy, when his novice wife comes off, comes up with all the impromptu plans. Basically, she brings a new set of eyes to the mission. She used to be a civilian, now she's studying the training manual, so she's bringing the perspective of the civilian and the perspective of someone who just who's only now reading the manual to someone who has field experience. Together they work better than apart. Yeah, sometimes she really comes through for them, but it's not like the only thing that ever happens. Just, like, if you actually sit down, like, sit down with like a piece of paper and and like you know do like a an an x when she's the one who saves the day and like a, a line whenever it's someone else it really is not as uneven as you apparently thought that it was when watching it not not at all just it's it's really disturbing to me how many people writing these reviews just yeah they they can't when whenever they look at female characters it's just they can't they can't see straight now i don't have a lot to say about steve howie uh, let's see i i appreciate that you know the the relationship between harry and helen is not as uneven as many sitcoms about married couples. And Mike O'Gorman plays Luther Tennant, fellow spy. He does well. He's not, like, absolutely amazing, but delivers. I quite like Erica Hernandez as Maria Ruiz. She really, like, whenever she need like, she basically delivers, like, Sometimes she has to have this, like, crap-eating grin because she's, like, she's pushing Luther, who's very closed off about his emotions, and she's kind of the one who gets him to admit, you know, so that, not not as, like, to make him feel bad or look bad, but to solve problems, you know, like I said, very stereotypical gender, you know, ideas, but, yeah, you know, the show is... A, a lot of the show is about how when men listen to women, the women close to us, the women who care about us, the women who want us to do well, we become better. 
And that clearly just drove up the wall this massive nest of misogynists. Just, they could not handle... Like, if you... There are so many shows where the female characters are much more... Like, you'd think they were talking about, like, Peggy Bundy or something, you know... Like, like, um, Judith, uh, um, from, from Two and a Half Men, you know, those are female characters that are really, really obnoxious a lot of the time, but, like, Helen, not even remotely. And, yeah, so Annabella Didion plays Dana Tasker. She's, like, the actress is good. The character's fine. I, I wish that they did more with her, but, at, you know, at least there is something with her, unlike with, with Jake. And Omar Miller plays Albert Gibb Gibson Jr. And, yeah, he's he's great. Very, very funny, you know, charming. He basically, he's the guy in the van, and he, like guides the missions from the from the van and I think that is what I'm going to I'll I'll just briefly say that there are there are some very recognizable faces if you watched the trailer for the show and I would definitely say each of them get some really, really great stuff to do on the show. And, uh, right, some, some, at least one, no, yeah, multiple user reviewers said that Helen is a Mary Sue. I really, like, dude, just, there is technically a definition for a Mary Sue. Like, a lot of... It seems like there's a lot of guys on the internet who think that Mary Sue just means I don't like women. Like, I, I don't think that Mary Sue... I, I feel like it's, it's... There's a lot of the time when it's applied very unevenly. I don't, I don't think it makes that much sense as a, a point of criticism. I think it very frequently applies at least as much, sometimes more so, especially with Star Wars, to the male protagonists, but... Okay, fine. I'll play along. Helen is not a Mary Sue. She makes mistakes all the time. Not everyone likes or admires her. Things don't come easily to her. She has to work for it. She's not idealized. Like, this is just misogynist hating on female characters. And, and they don't... And they can't put words to why. And, yeah, um, I'm not going to be quoting the misogynistic and racist rhetoric. I'll just say, if you're bothered by me bringing that up, take your frustrations to the people writing those reviews. I would love to not talk about those things, but they're so prevalent, I would it would be irresponsible not to. Now, let's see... Yeah, so, yeah, I, I see a number of reviewers saying they find Helen to be obnoxious. I'm not saying that every single one of these reviewers had watched the movie, but certainly the movie version of Helen is made to be so much more obnoxious than this Helen. The major difference is that this Helen also does get to be competent at things. So, yeah, these reviewers, the ones of them who watch the movie, just can't handle a woman being allowed to be competent. And... Right, the the um, I think it does take several episodes before they really justify the presence of Luther and Maria, but I do think that they ultimately get there, and and Dana also doesn't start out as compelling as she gets later. Now, Helen is definitely somewhat neurotic. She's not the only show. She's not the only woman that the show has empathy for. It subverts the trope of the conventionally attractive temptress, and the show acknowledges that men can feel inadequate as well as women can, and 
Though the concept seems as though it would only serve as power fantasy for men, there are times where Helen is the one with more power in the relationships. Both of them clearly do care about the family, both their spouse and the kids. Helen tends to worry more about the kids than Harry does, but not because he doesn't care, it's just because he's so used to feeling like he can't do anything about it when on missions, so, you know, he just tra he's trained himself to not think about it. And maybe not from right away, but certainly over the course of a couple of episodes, Harry is as snarky as Helen, sometimes even more so. And everyone in the cast that has to does deliver on both the sitcom and spy front. They have enough of a rubber face. I mean, no one's Rowan Atkinson, but that's not a fair standard. And they can come across as sufficiently serious. Like, there's no one in an action scene in this entire show that where it feels like, okay, they want this character to be cool, but it doesn't quite work. And... Yeah, so as far as dialogue, they try to keep exposition to a minimum, makes make as much of it as possible visual. A lot of the comedy is in the dialogue, particularly Helen's. And... So yeah, the, the cinematography, definitely you can tell that they have a limited budget, but they want it to look impressive, and I think they do a, a good job. Uh, you know, it's, your mileage may vary. And the editing does a, a really good job with the... Um, yeah, the... the it keeps things moving, and when the the when a scene has to to rest a little more, it also does that. Right now, the special effects are definitely not like incredible. I I I really appreciate that some of the explosions are actual. Like I get it. I I you know I. I've worked on sets. I didn't nothing with explosions, but I know that like it takes time, costs and thus costs money, and you know so. But thankfully, some of the explosions are practical because the the CG explosions and fire tend to not look very good. There's some really good stunt work. And they get some good use out of, like, certain location shooting and such. There's a lot of action in the show. It's well choreographed, very, a lot of tension and suspense, fast-paced. Since every seven minutes there's going to be a commercial break, they want people to wait through that to see what happens next in the episode. And this is one of those shows where not only the good guys, but also the bad guys fight with smart tactics, which is, of course, harder to choreograph, but also much more satisfying, both to choreograph and to watch. And the action is cool and sometimes tells a story and furthers character. And but but yeah, you know, yeah. So so very, you know, there's there's car chases, there's you know martial arts and and other physical fights. There's shooting with handguns, submachine guns, assault rifles, sniper rifles. You know, shooting while in vehicles. Chases on foot and in vehicles, often with cars, but sometimes there's also like helicopter involved and such. And yeah, all the action is fun and tense. The music is quite good. Um, I, I don't have a lot to say about. Yeah, the, the needle drops are often these kind of pop rock kind of songs, and sometimes it's very on the nose. Like, okay, you're 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 saying that the lyrics fit the situation, and you know sometimes that's a little annoying. But yeah, I I really don't have much issue at all with the the music, and it's the kind of thing that, like, if the music is bad, it really stands out as, as just, yeah. They do a good job on the sound design, on the, the gadgets, and I think that pretty much, yeah, 
I would say the the best elements are of of the show are the way it does justice to the concept and it's progressive, not as hateful as the movie. Uh, overall, the worst aspect, I think, if it had been at least a little bit, I guess the word is edgier, a little a little bit less safe. I think they could have gotten some really great stuff out of that. And then there's, of course, the occasional racism, which, yeah. But, like, I really appreciate, you know, there's a there's a bunch of different villains on this. And, yeah, a lot of them are white dudes, just like in real life. So, yeah. And, yeah, the most frequent, the, the criticisms I came across most were criticisms of Helen and yeah um i was probably most worried that it would be very watered down and it definitely does do some of that the thing i was most looking forward to was more of ginger gonzaga after she hulk attorney at law where she's incredibly funny and i mean i would definitely say overall that is the funnier show and i don't know if it's the better show in all regards, you know, that one isn't as much of an action show, so if that's what you're looking for, you know, this is what to choose, but I think the, the, yeah, just, like, she's really allowed to go off in She-Hulk. Her character is more, like, ridiculous. And, like, I'm glad that she's also, and I think she does well at playing less ridiculous here. But, you know, if, if we are judging on, like, what is funnier, I do think that overall she is, like, she's incredibly funny on uh, She-Hulk. She's also very, very funny here, but not quite as much. And, yeah, I would say, you know, whether we're talking about the season opener, season finale, or overall season... Yeah, season one really delivers. It is great. The trailer does give too much away, but does also give you a good idea of what the show is like. Uh, the cover and poster gives at least a little bit too much away, but also really gives you an idea of what the show is like. And it's not like, it doesn't give more away than is like, yeah, I, I think it's fine to, to look at the, the poster. Now, that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes, where it has a 39% from critics, based on 18 reviews, only 7 of which are fresh, and the um, user score is 50%. So, users liked it better than critics did, technically. Wow, I hope I hope some of the misogynists have seen that and are like screaming into a pillow right now. Anyway, um, or did when they saw it. Well, I like the idea that they've been screaming into a pillow ever since realizing that. Anyway, yes, so 50% based on more than 100 ratings, and yeah, the average rating is 2.9 out of 5, and on... Rotten Tomatoes, anything above a 3.5 is an up vote. So, yeah. Which is actually, yeah, that's a that's a decent amount for the... Anyway. Um, yeah. The consensus, blandest rule, true lies, might borrow the name of cinematic blockbuster, but retains none of the personality, would differentiate it from a crowded field of espionage romances. On Metacritic, it has a 49 out of 100, based on 14 critic reviews, 2 positive, 9 mixed, 3 negative. And, yeah, I've already quoted the negative ones, and, uh, is this, huh, there is no user... Yeah, not enough ratings to calculate a score, but one positive, two negative ratings, and yeah, one review that gave it a 10 out of 10, one who gave it a 0 out of 10, so yeah. 
And that brings us to IMDB, where it has a 5.2 out of 10 based on 4,100 uh, votes. 14.5% gave it 10. 13.6 gave it 1. So I don't know how much we can trust either of those because clearly a bunch of people gave it extremely low ratings and then some other people came in and said I don't like that it's rated that that the overall score is so low so I'm gonna vote really really high yeah 12.5 percent gave it 5 11.7 gave it 7 10.9 gave it 6 10.4 gave it 8 7.7 gave it 4 7.4 gave it 3 6.3 gave it 2 and 5.1 gave it 9 so extremely mixed in in other words and that brings us to the user reviews there are 133 user reviews or 114 if you hide spoilers I read all of them including the spoiler ones and 17 of them gave it a 1 out of 10 20 gave it 2 14 gave it 3 11 gave it 4, 12 gave it 5, 7 gave it 6, 7 gave it 7, 9 gave it 8, 5 gave it 9, and 10 gave it 10. So yeah, more negative than positive in that regard. And that brings us to my rating, which is 7 Spies, spies with Double Lives out of 10 and... I might watch this again. I, I, it's not like a super high priority. I don't know. Maybe a month from now, I'll, I'll sit down and watch it again. You know, there's a lot of better things on Disney Plus, and thankfully, a lot of those are also progressive. And let's see. Yeah, I. This is not really one of those cases where I think. I think. I, I hope that in the future, you know, misogyny will become less socially acceptable and people will realize how much good there was of, of you know, how, how much this encourages communication with your partner, with the women in your life, you know, but I can see how, like, other than that, it doesn't quite... It doesn't stand out in the field. It is not a man standing out in his field, outstanding in his field. And the, yeah, um, I think probably if, if, you know, if, if anyone ends up throwing a lot more money at this kind of thing, I think it might be better to go for something slightly more adult and mature and yeah make it you know increase the depth but I think they do have a lot of things that really really work and yeah let me know in the comments what is your favorite doesn't have to be a show what's your favorite spy in in live action and and no I did not actually plan I just real like two days from now I'm gonna watch and then do a vlog on the most recent Mission Impossible movie I did not actually realize that the that I would be doing these two videos so close to one another anyway if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, uh, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week talking about the most recent um, season I've, I've watched of an animated Star Wars show. I do one on the most recent episode of Secret Invasion, one on the most recent episode I've personally gotten around watching of Scream Queens, and one on the two episodes I've 
gotten around to watching of The Bear. I'm hoping to finish season one of The Bear. Well, I am going to finish season one of The Bear just in time that I'll be able to talk about season two of The Bear as the, you know, yeah, once the the first episode of the season, of, of the second season premieres. Recently reviewing thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this video, but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video, instead of in separate videos, since its running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if you more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalogs. What's catch me next week? I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.